very last day in Mandesino with Schlafer Logging. So this is the last day we're headed up. I'm following in my car right now. The job site's north of Anton's house, so I'm parking close to the job site. The fog here is crazy, guys. We're working up on the mountain and the fog, it comes down almost like snow. You're just working, it's sunny, and then all of a sudden you can see the fog and the mist moving. And it comes down and you instantly feel significantly colder. It's such a weird environment to work in. It's The, the fog moves so fast. Where I live in Washington, you, you don't see the fog move. It's it's really trippy and it's really dense, but that's the kind of environment these redwoods thrive in. So we're going back, what was I saying? Yeah, so I'm following, look at, <laughs> let's see if I can zoom in here. Look at the bar on that thing. So we're bringing the big saw today. We've got uh, we've got some big ones that we're doing, some big redwoods. I, I've been here for a few days and I've, I've been po just done a few Instagram posts and I've noticed that some people do not like to see these redwoods come down. They are really concerned that we're just devastating the old growth forest. But I think what a lot of people don't understand is we're cutting these big trees down. I, I think that most people really don't comprehend just how exceptionally fast these trees grow. I mean, as far as a tree becoming large very quickly, nothing compares to coast redwoods and giant sequoias. There's just nothing like them. They grow so fast, so big. So even though we're cutting huge trees, these aren't like thousand year old trees that we're cutting down. You know, some of them, you know, they might be a hundred years old. Anton was saying, if you can log in Northern California, you can log anywhere in the world. They've got a lot going against them. They've got really steep terrain. They've got huge trees, brittle trees that explode if you, if you fall them wrong. And they've got a lot of really strict regulations. These trees are really protected. You know, the logging happens, but it's very selective. They're not doing old growth logging. You know, other places you'll see them clear cut. They don't clear cut forests here. They do thinning projects where they'll selectively remove some of the trees and they leave the others. And that actually helps the forest because the other trees can thrive more and they're less likely to burn up when they're thinned out like this. So. There's a lot of preservation that goes on, but these trees get really big, really fast. So you're gonna see us drop some big ones today. So this is a 500 acre plot that they're thinning out. This is really like a dream come true for me to come down here. There are not a lot of people. The redwoods don't grow in that big of a region. I mean, there are like a handful of people in the whole world who log redwoods. It's really a unique thing. And yeah, just understand we're not we're not cutting down the, the old growth here. They just get that big, that fast. These trees are like toothpicks compared to some of the ones if you go, around like the Avenue of the Giants and you know a lot of the the national parks you'll just see just they're insane how big they are so but uh, yeah so we're gonna have fun this is the last day we're just gonna drop a few trees I don't even think we're bucking today because we're, we're kind of in a hurry it's like a 15 hour drive home and we're trying to get to Grants Pass tonight me and Gordy so you probably don't want to see my car anymore you probably want to see some cutting it's been five minutes now so let's get after it look at that thing I got this one, buddy. Yeah, okay. Take that. All right, so here we are. This is going to be the biggest tree that I've ever felled. This thing is probably six, seven feet in diameter. Big old redwood snag. It's not super tall, maybe a little over 100 feet, but it's fat, dude. Anton thinks this tree is nothing. <laughs> he, he wanted to go do some even bigger ones, but they're way down the road. It's all blocked off with logs. I think this is a pretty succulent specimen. First, we're gonna, we gotta shave the bark off. Gotta cut some of this stuff out of the way. Anton's gonna help me out because I've obviously never dropped a seven foot redwood before. So we're gonna shave the bark off. We're gonna start our pilot cuts with, that's a 36 inch bar on a 500i. And then we'll use the 72 inch bar to Make sure everything is lined up. Me and Anton are gonna cut it together for good reasons. I shouldn't be doing this by myself. These trees, even though this is really stout, it's very easy to break these. So we've gotta do a traditional style block face Humboldt. And there's a lot to this. It takes a lot of practice to be really good and smooth at it like Anton is. So we're gonna cut it together. He's gonna help me out. It's gonna be a blast. And Gord, Gord, Gordy's gonna be a film, <laughs> filming cameraman. I gave you this tree. Cameraman oh, Gordy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't want this one. They, they don't like it because it's short. It's not big enough. <laughs> not big enough. It looks big enough to me. 20 foot. Circumference? Yep. Up where we're cutting it. What is that? It's uh, almost six and a half feet diameter. Bigger than me. 
Yeah, this will be the biggest tree I've ever cut for sure. What are you doing there, Anton? Um, I am going to, because I don't have my gun and sticks with me or any gun and sticks, and so this is just a crude way of being able to gun the tree. I'll show you how. So we walked our layout already to make sure there's no stumps out there. Come to the center of the tree, compensate for a little bit of the lean. Make sure there's nothing hanging your tape up like that. So I'll plug my tape into the center of the tree here. Now, I know that that's exactly the line. This yellow line, my tape line, is exactly where I want this tree to fall. So then, on the side that I'm gonna gun, so then I'll come back here, and I'll figure out where my undercut's gonna be, the end of my undercut's gonna be. So we're gonna do 44 foot, five inches on this side, we'll make a mark with our crayon. Obviously shaving the bark on these redwoods is a little easier. I'll just make that mark. And then I'll go to the other side of this tree. So I'm putting it at 44 foot five inches here. So when I'm making my undercut and I saw in, I won't go any further than this. My bottom cut won't go any farther than this. My top cut, I won't go any farther than this. And then when I start my back cut, I'll leave about that much holding wood. And then I'll work my way back to that side. So the idea is it's like a straight laser beam, the tape, right? And then by measuring each side, you know that you're just getting exactly the same We've consistent. made a big That's triangle, it. basically, like a gunning a pair of gunning sticks. When you stick them in, they do this and point to where it's at. Mm -hmm. I don't have gunning sticks, so I did one side, then I did the other, and that makes that point out there. That point is where I stuck my nail in. I know it's exact because I measured 44.5 on this side, I measured 44.5 on the other side. It's a lot more accurate than just w going with your yeah, gunning sights yeah. on the saw. I mean, something like this, you want to measure it out so you hit your shot. There's, there's, There are some stumps out there that we need to miss. We don't want to break this thing any more than it's probably already going to break. They break more when they got big limbs on the bottom like they this? They got big limbs like this, and this tree is here for a reason. I don't know what it is. I know the landowner wants this out of here, so it doesn't matter what quality this tree has inside. They just want it cut. There are way more bigger ones than this yeah, here, there, huh? there are some trees down the hill that need to get cut that are... This one's about six and a half, close to seven foot in diameter. The ones down the hill are 10 and 12 foot in diameter. <laughs> so crazy. They're all huge out here. So, okay, sweet. So what's next? Shaving um, the bark? Well, we're gonna start that little saw and make a curve. And uh, and then we're gonna start the big saw and I'm gonna get you in on it to start right. our bottom cut. Cool. <laughs> He scribes the line with the little saw and then sticks the big one in and it's just like a laser beam.
this out. And I did a video earlier while I was here with Anton about the traditional humble. Right where yeah. they block the face out like that. So you can check that out too for more in-depth explanation why you want to cut these big old uh, big redwoods like that. <laughs> Hey, this is you and Jacob's tree. How did I get wrangled into this? I mean, We're a team. <laughs> You're supposed to be the camera. I got a broken shoulder. I'm filming. You look great, Gordy. Good. So the next stage, Jacob, is we're gonna to want to snipe this. Okay. And you're okay. gonna measure that as well. We're gonna measure that now. We're gonna pick a spot in here like this with the tape. Obviously, there's better ways to do this, but we're out here in the middle of the brush. You don't have all the right tools. You can still make do with what you got. What's the better way? We can clean the undercut out a little bit more. And gun and sticks sometimes have uh, measurements on the stick itself. I see. I think we're gonna go uh, one foot three inches. So we'll make a mark right here. Okay, and then we're gonna go in a little further. Stick it in the same way we had it. One foot three inches, all right? Okay. One foot three inches. When you start your saw in here and you make that cut, you want all three of your dots to line up because that matches your undercut or where you're steering the tree. And if you don't measure, the snipe's not gonna perfectly match. Exactly, if you're off a half an inch, you're off an inch here, that's 20 or 30 feet out there. Wow. So we'll get this started and then uh, We'll get the angle started and then you can finish the snipe off. Cool. And I'll get this backside sawed off and I'll tell you where to stop on the other side and you're on your own. All right. one foot three and we're still one foot three for anybody that's wondering <laughs> that undercut looks for a big tree it's almost got even wood all the way across that's pretty that's good that's really stuff, nice on holding wood for that big a saw six foot two across six foot two that way it was definitely wider this way seven foot this way seven foot yep <laughs> seven feet and i feel alive it's a nice looking yeah. hinge too as big as that is i mean that's Almost even all the way across. Dude, thank you for letting me be a part of that. It's all you, bud. <laughs> that was incredible. It saved all the way out. Nothing's broke. Yeah. Nothing's broke? Nothing. That's Limbs. awesome.
but yeah, it's, uh, it's not even that old. You can see the growth rings are gigantic on it. Crazy. Not even old growth. Look at the, the, the bark is so thick. The pool on the, on the fiber. So weird. The bark just comes off out and fuzzy. It pulls out fuzzy. That's what grabs yourself. Yeah. yeah. Anton's family has been logging these woods since before that tree was alive. It's crazy to think about. Yep. They just grow so fast. Well, let's get her bucked up, boys. No, they're sport falling, sport bud. Falling. We're just sport falling. We're going to leave this for the rigging crew. I'm beat. Huh? You <laughs> no, you got to limit and bucket. I had to fly the drone. I've been doing a lot today. I think we should take a log off. I'm a film man. I just get to watch. <laughs> popped that's incredible how come the wiggling back and forth helps i'm helping the curve it's like clearing it out yep. and widening it it's up. it's almost like reaming sometimes this big saw if you go direct bore like that and you don't wiggle it'll jerk your chain stretch it throw it right off the bar while yeah. you're in a cut like that i had that happen to me once actually yeah, yeah that's interesting i've never seen that before that like that's a fishy move <laughs> Okay. That's the chunk I put out there to measure off of. And we hit it. And we hit it perfect, yeah. It's a piece of wood that he stuck his tape measure on. In the beginning. Yeah. And I stuck it in there. That's how accurate that can be. I mean, Incredible. it's not gunning sticks and it's, you know, it's not ideal, but that rudimentary way of measuring your cut, the longer you get out as well. I mean, you can measure 20 foot, but if you get 40 feet out, the further out you go, the better accuracy right. you have. But yeah, you can really see here when I stopped you. You were headed this way? Yeah. And that would have made this log Yeah, off. if you're even just a little bit off up here, it's like a lot yeah, by the time you get there. down there. Yeah. And it makes a big difference when you're selling the wood to the mill. Right. All right, well, thanks for letting an arborist come out and watch you do your thing, Anton. You're welcome. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it, was, it was awesome. Yep, good job. Hey, let me know, you guys, if you want to see some more tips and tricks or how-tos from Anton. What are some videos you'd like to see? Me and Gordy will have to come back down here. And you can follow Anton Hot Saw on TikTok and Instagram. I was waiting for that. I really and know. West Coast Saw. Gordy with West Coast Saw. I was the chauffeur, the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't even get a plug in this. The video. operator. <laughs> what am I going to have to do with tube salad? We're not done. He's the We're one that, he's the the one that makes all the innovations to make our job that much easier. <laughs> yes, you can find Gord. Gordy sells aftermarket chainsaw parts. Tell me what Gordy's parts you got on this saw. Gordy built this saw for me. There's a clutch cover on here. I got my three point dogs, which are my absolute favorite thing that West Coast Saw puts out. They just make, it's a game changer for me. Uh, it's got the suspension kit, the 500i, so it stiffens it up quite a bit. Got the air cleaner on here, makes it breathe. And the sticker. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what makes it run fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's parts that you can buy from West Coast Saw online and multiple still dealers and other dealers and shops around. Just his bolt-on parts alone will make any 500i act like a completely different saw. They're tried and tested and I've run this saw for over a year and we run it hard and this thing does nothing but eat all day, every day. It's an amazing saw. Are you happy with that plug, Gordy? Yes, thank you, Anton. <laughs> We're headed back. We're done with the trip. Apparently my new name is Tube Salad. These guys are <laughs> calling me Tube Salad the whole time. And it got me thinking I should probably for all the new viewers. I did a video on my old channel, but we're gonna talk about my favorite work time meal. Again, I'm gonna show you how to make a tube salad. This is the kind I like the best, the Caesar salad, the Taylor Farms. Taylor Farms, if you are looking to sponsor my videos, I'm definitely open to doing that. 
So first, it's a bag. It starts as a bag of salad. This is a great way, you know, when you're working, you don't have a bowl, you don't have, you can't mix it right. Well, you, you take this bag, you open it up. This has all the nutrients you need to thrive. Inside, you're gonna find this stuff. You've got some delicious crumpled croutons, some Parmesan cheese, some Caesar salad, which also acts as the lubricant. <laughs> I started eating the tube salad and wasn't feeling quite satiated, so I also get a can of chicken for protein. So we're just gonna dump it all in there. Tell me not even a part of you is curious. No. Not a single part. None. All right, so now I've got the dressing lubricant. It's just gonna go right in here. All right, so now we got our canned chicken. We're gonna crack that open. I gotta pour, <laughs> you have to pour the chicken juice out. God, you're lucky Anton isn't here. God. I gotta pour the chicken juice out. Ugh. Oh, it's getting all over the car. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's horrible. So we drained the chicken. Oh, God, it stinks. <laughs> I can't believe we eat this stuff. It's just chicken. It's just canned chicken. Now we're gonna put the canned chicken in. It's a great meal for driving, you know? God, you're getting it all over yourself. Oh, man. That's disgusting. We're gonna pull over. <laughs> it's gone bad. Tube salad went bad. <laughs> Tube salad gone bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. All right. We got all the ingredients are in here. This is where this the tube salad gets special. So you're just gonna roll up the top and you're just gonna shake it vigorously. Like 30 seconds to five minutes, somewhere in there. All right, so we've shaken it up. Now this is where the magic happens and this is why I call it tube salad. You're going to evenly distribute all the salad on the bottom half of the bag with the bag laying horizontally and then you're going to slightly start to <laughs> roll it over so that it looks almost like a burrito or like a tube. And now you see, because of the Caesar salad, we've got a nice lubricant right here. It's like, it's basically like Gogurt salad. And see, it just slides right up. So you can make a small opening up here and you just squeeze it right out from the bottom up and you get delicious Caesar salad right out the top. It tastes better than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the no, Doritos? You did Doritos last time. I don't have any Doritos. Oh, that's right. I put Doritos in it yesterday. It was even better. So that's a tube salad. Extremely convenient way to get all your nutrients while you're working. Anyways, the loggers, they, they really got a kick out of the tube salads. Now they just call me tube salad. So me and Gordy are going to drive home. I'm going to suck down this salad real quick. I just want to thank you for watching these videos that we filmed. Please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed them. It's hard, you know, this traveling around thing is really weird for me, you know, it's like everywhere I go, you know that feeling when it's your first day at work, you know, and you're out of your element, you don't know what's going on. It's really hard for me traveling around to place after place and being, it's like the first day on the job everywhere I go. So I appreciate you guys watching this because it's really satisfying traveling around. Like I was in Hawaii earlier this year and now I'm doing redwood logging and it's it's like a dream come true for me. But sometimes it's, it's hard to be out of your element and it's hard to be the new guy everywhere you go, you know? And it's hard to capture it all on film and everything. So I just appreciate you guys watching this video. I appreciate Gordy for taking me down here. No problem, it was a blast. Yeah, introduce me we'll to Anton. We'll do her again. Yeah, so we'll be back. So, anyways, yeah, thanks guys. You enjoy the rest of your day. Well, I enjoy sucking the salad down. <laughs>